Um, moving on to the, the, the health improvement workforce and Nic Nicola Brown and your chair of the workforce development group at NHS Greater Glasgow yes. and Clyde and so you're going to give your reflections. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Can I just say where we're setting up? Thanks very much for the opportunity to present today. Um, I guess the presentation that I have is, is sharing with you some of the work that we've been doing in Greater Glasgow and Clyde um, around just workforce that. development. Thanks, Fiona. And um, Fiona was an integral part of that work before she um, took up the current position at Health Scotland. So whilst we miss her um, from the Workforce Development Group, it's great that we still have the opportunity to work together. OK, so um, some background. And if you were at the faculty conference um, in October, November last year, some of this will be pretty familiar, but I've updated it um, somewhat to reflect quite where we are at the moment. In Greater Glasgow and Clyde, as you'll know, we're the, we're the biggest board um, in Scotland and we have about 270 staff working in health improvement across a, a wide range of teams, both geographically focused, um, topic specialist teams, um, teams which are operating at a board-wide level as well as geographically. Um, and that's done across six local authority areas. So I'm part of the Greater um, part of the Glasgow City, I should say, um, Health and Social Care Partnership. So lots of staff um, under one employer, um, but working in a number of organisational constructs um, and, and trying to bring all of that together and make some sense of how, how we are a cohesive unit, um, I think has been some of the challenge that we've begun to work our way through. And that's, that's what I'd like to share with you today. So that's about, yeah, how, how do we go about being collegiate um, when we are um, at the scale we are? And I guess this slide um, probably echoes quite a bit of what Andrew was saying in his presentation earlier. So we're aware of lots of the politics that are around for us in trying to take our work forward. Um, lots of us are now in, um, part of integrated organisations and health and social care partnerships and all of the additional dimensions of politics um, that, that, that that brings us. Um, we've got new relationships with colleagues in the local authorities um, and across the NHS. And, and I think it's fair to say, um, and we'll not be unique in this, we're increasingly working with the whole suite of community planning partners, um, which is about to expand, obviously, with the Community Empowerment Act and new duties that are placed on a whole range of other organisations across the country to fulfil their um, uh, requirements around community planning. Um, so we work closely with um, colleagues in leisure trusts in the housing sector um, and, of course, with our, our colleagues in um, primary care and, and all of the independent contractors. So there's a whole sphere of people that we need to be effectively working with, building our relationships with, um, and keeping all of that going is, is, is a huge ask. And our staff do it very well. But all of this is happening at a time of, as we've heard, unprecedented financial pressures, not only in health boards, um, but in the local authorities. So when you're in an integrated organisation, um, the danger is that there's a double whammy in terms of our savings that we are required to make going forward. And of course, close working with the voluntary sector and third sector organisations means that we, we experience um, the squeeze that they are feeling as well. And, and they have been feeling that squeeze for quite some time. So the capacity in terms of delivering on the agendas that an actual, um, when, we, when we boil it all down, we have many common agendas. Um, but the range of partners that are required to deliver and, and be effective on all of this, um, we are all struggling in terms of, of our, our resources. So it makes it all the more important, I think, that we are a cohesive unit going forward. We also have a lot of performance scrutiny. Um, I can only really speak for the health improvement part of the public health world, um, because that's all of my experience. But I think it's also fair to say that with all of these other pressures comes much more of a focus in terms of 
um, being able to articulate and describe what it is that we bring, what are we bringing to the table when we're in all of these partnerships, um, what is the value of, of the work that we do. And because lots of us who've, who've been in around this work for some time know, um, often the work that we do doesn't have a, a short term result. It is about long term impact and it is about the long game. Um, but nonetheless, we require to find ways in which to describe the value of what we do. And some of that can be done if we use um, the skills and knowledge framework in an effective way. OK, so in terms of the response that we're creating within uh, Greater Glasgow and Clyde, um, we have now a, a workforce development group that's probably a couple of years old. Um, I lose track of time, um, as we all do when it comes to these presentations, but I think I got involved in chairing the group from November 2015. Um, a colleague who is in the room, Anna, at the back, uh, asked if I would be interested to take this piece of work forward. And we had had um, a workforce development group functioning previously, so it, was, it wasn't starting from, from nothing. But I think we were at a point where, with lots of changes in the organisation, it felt opportune to begin to try and harness some of the energy and, and get things back on track around our journey on this. So we have some working principles within our, our workforce development group, and I'm not going to slavishly read them through, but I think what's really important about the approach that we've got, and hopefully um, the reason why I feel it, it's, it's having some good results, is it's very much about trying to build and engage ownership of this agenda across what is appreciably a, a very large group of staff within our organisation. It has been about trying to encourage people to take ownership of their, um, their own personal development but also to place that in the context of all of these other pressures that, that I'm describing. So, you know, our staff to have the confidence to be able to describe what they do accurately and well, um, and actually to be quite engaged and motivated in taking forward what it is we need to do to make sure that our place at the table is valued when we go into discussions with, with our partners, both internally and, and externally. So it's something about getting that collective commitment as, as, as we take this work stream forward. I'm not going to attempt to describe this in any depth, but just to mention that we early on developed a logic model to try and support the work going forward. And it's a, it's a busy slide, but one of the things that we are currently doing is um, working on an update to the logic model. So just bringing that into, into the current context. But I think the important thing about the logic model was that it enabled us to set out um, something that could be shared with our staff that described our long-term uh, goals with all of this. And actually, the long-term goals um, were really about our workforce being able to demonstrate um, their skills and knowledge and having an improved sense of professional identity. And I guess thinking about some of the other groups of public health professionals that, that um, we're familiar with, the, the lack of formal registration means that I think we are often subject to questions about um, our backgrounds, about our experience or, and our competency indirectly. So there was something about trying to create a sense of this is who we are as a workforce, this is what we bring, and actually we are a very competent and, and valuable part um, of the NHS system and, and of our uh, integrated organisations. And we've always had an eye on registration in terms of the workforce development group. Um, some of our members um, have already um, been registered um, through the pilot practitioner scheme that we've had operating in Scotland for a couple of years now. And that's something that we're really keen um, in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. We, we continue the momentum on and, and that we contribute to the national um, progress around that. So, um, over the last couple of years, just a couple of slides to describe to you what we've begun to deliver. Um, we chose to take um, early on a, an approach where we would try and, um, chaotic as this could be, bring together a really large scale um, engagement event for as many of our staff as possible. Um, not easy um, when you have the number of staff that we do, um, as I've described. But we, we had a 1st of April event uh, a couple of years back, which was really to, to start the conversation. 
And pivotal to that event, we at that point um, used the public health skills and knowledge framework as something that, that was a key part of what we needed to begin to share, begin to make sure that people were aware of and find out how they were using it. So that, that's been a thread running really throughout um, the work that we've done. And we continued that last year. So I, I guess in our first event, we probably had close to 100 people participating. Um, some of you uh, in the room were, were there. And last year, um, we probably had about 85 to 90 people from our workforce coming along. And we deliberately, for last year, tried to attract staff who hadn't been at the original event um, back in, in the April previously. So there's just something about bringing our staff together, which sounds so simple, um, but logistically, um, if you can work around it, the value that that's brought to kind of enlivening this agenda has been huge because in all these different organisational entities, different teams, different pressures, portfolios, etc., it's quite rare to be able to bring together as large a group of staff and even for staff to, um, you know, to be able to chat with colleagues in, in completely different local authorities, completely different teams, um, has in itself been really valuable. And I think that that has helped to begin to have that sense of cohesion that you know we are we are a workforce we have a lot in common despite we might be working on slightly different things day to day we actually share so much um, and that's been really pivotal so we've got a, a workforce development group um, with representation from lots of our individual teams um, and we also um, then set out following last year's event to develop a, a wider group of, of workforce development champions um, and I think we probably have about a dozen workforce development champions, again, a good spread across, across the teams. And in terms of our accountability, um, the workforce development group reports up to our strategic um, group of health improvement inequalities managers within Greater Glasgow and Clyde. And that group's chaired by our director of public <coughs> health. So we report regularly um, up the way, but accountability works on lots of levels, as you know, and it's really important that our workforce champions and those of us on the group are feeding out all the time to our teams. And that's been a key thing as well as is keeping all of this going, um, keeping our teams informed about the work that we're doing. A big focus of the work to date has been about trying to embed reflective practice um, approaches within everybody's work um, day to day. And one of the tasks um, that the group early, early on really adopted was about rolling out a tool um, which are tools um, to enable people to capture the reflective practice. Um, and these were tools that were developed in one of the areas and, and were being used successfully. So know how, show how um, tools, which I'll show you in a second. But really the, the, the detail around how that looks um, is less important. What's more important is that we um, put in place a, a whole series really of workshops that enabled people to get familiar with those and actually the expectation that we now have across our entire workforce is about every person completing two pieces of reflective practice, using those tools each year, and those contribute to their um, evidence in terms of their personal development um, and, and uh, their KSF and so on. So it's not an add-on, and we're trying to get to the point where people get in the way of doing that, and the, and the two really becomes a bit of a minimum, but actually being reflective about our practice is, is a helpful way to approach our work on an ongoing basis. The other thing about um, what we've delivered is, um, and apologies, I've got some acronyms in, in the slides, um, but some of you will be familiar with what these things are. We've tried really hard with our scale um, to bring about some coordination around the training um, and development opportunities that we have for staff within Greater Glasgow and Clyde. So um, training courses such as the Improving Health Developing Effective Practice which was previously something that we offered um, regularly um, going back a few years, had dropped off the agenda to some extent. We had lost a bit of our training capacity around that. So that's been something that we've um, resurrected with a vengeance. Um, it's a really good course if you're familiar with it um, as a kind of foundation really for anybody who's working in um, health improvement. 
Um, and also we brought together groups of staff last year um, on the Achieving Better Community Development training. So again, there's just something about better coordination of all of that, not having six teams and six local authorities um, duplicating any effort, but also that kind of cross-learning that we can have when we bring people together um, for learning opportunities. We're part of the pilot, as I mentioned, for the National um, Registration Scheme. We've been a participating board from, from the get-go. I think we're the only board currently who is offering mentoring for the candidates who are going through um, their registration. Um, and that brings about um, a bit of a, a pressure on capacity. Um, however, I think that our candidates have felt the benefit of that. Um, there is something about um, how we consistently offer support to those who are pursuing their registration. Um, and again, through the Workforce Development Group, that's something that we've been able to discuss and agree. And managers are clear then about the, the, the level of support and, and time afforded to people who are um, pursuing their registration. And we've gone about offering various learning opportunities as well over time. So we sponsored some places, for example, last year at the faculty conference um, for some of our um, practitioners, which I think was, was really valued by those who went along because sometimes you don't get the opportunity to go to those types of um, events unless you are presenting. Um, and it's something that I think is, is a really good learning opportunity. These are just two quick slides showing you the know-how and the show-how tools and I put them up for no other reason than I presume that the presentations will be circulated. Yeah. So if you um, wish to um, beg, borrow, steal these, um, that's absolutely fine by us. So in terms of where we're going next, um, in November last year we brought together our um, workforce development group with the champions that we have um, to have a bit of a stock take a bit of a development session around the work that we've done so far and what we need to do next. And that was very much thinking about the context um, that we are now in and obviously with an eye to um, the publication of the revised skills and knowledge framework and how we can become more familiar with that. Um, having just probably um, prior to its publication um, been getting lots of people tuned into working with the old framework so there was something about a transition and, and how people begin to, to grapple with working with the framework. As I said we're looking at refreshing our logic model. Um, once we have done that we will be happy to share any of the material actually that we're producing via the group. And we're going to formalise the kind of role descriptor for our workforce development champions in the next few months. And really, um, given time of year, I guess it's opportune that we begin to shape our work plan for the future year going ahead. And I think I'm on to my last slide. <coughs> Yeah, I think just wanted to finish with a nice picture because um, my, my presentation has been kind of word heavy, although appreciably there's been no statistics within it. Um, and I think lots of what Andrew and the other speakers have said thus far today has really chimed with me. Um, there is definitely something about how we get smarter about distributed leadership in terms of our workforce. I think lots of practitioners, and for my own team, I can speak from our business support staff, assistant practitioners, all the way through to health improvement leads um, and manager. is something about the, um, people being confident to exercise um, their leadership roles, irrespective of, of the, the day job. And obviously something about um, being familiar with the, the skills and knowledge framework and able to apply that in terms of evidence and, and reflecting on their learning going forward. The, the photograph um, that I'm closing with is, is, is a photo from last year when um, I work in the East End of Glasgow. Um, there was a community event which was brought together by um, a few agencies, including our own staff. Um, and it was a sad occasion, really, but um, I thought... Um, it was worth uh, making the point. Uh, the, the families who are here have all lost somebody um, through suicide. And the, the positive side of that was that they wanted to have an occasion where they could actually have a bit of a, a memorial around that and a, and a sharing of how they felt about that experience. Um, and they decided themselves that this is what they wanted to do, was to have the, the release of the balloons. Um, a couple of our practitioners are, are pictured in the photograph. 
But the reason that I chose to finish on this, um, rather than just picking a, an abstract quote or, or something pithy to finish off with, was I think actually there's quite a lot of challenge for all of us um, in taking forward this agenda. And it is about being very outward looking. Um, Andrew described lots of the challenges that are around politically, nationally. We, we need to be very mindful of all of that. Um, there's also a wee bit about letting go. So I think distributed leadership for me is very much about being willing to let um, and allow and encourage and facilitate staff at all levels um, to fulfil their potential. Um, and I guess that applies very much to the wider workforce context as well. So when we're working with our partners in the voluntary sector um, and community planning and lots of other settings, you know, we have to come to the table valuing everybody's contribution equally um, and not see ourselves as, you know, at, at X, Y or Z level. And actually, I think the, the revised framework is very helpful in that regard because it, it, it brings a reality and an equality in terms of where people are at. So that's all of my presentation. I hope it's been useful. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to